A bag contains five red marbles, ten white marbles, and five blue marbles. You draw four marbles out at random without replacement. What is the probability that all the marbles are red? So we'll start with that. Let's do a little organizing here. We have red marbles and we have five that are red. We have white marbles and there's 10. We have blue marbles and there are five blue marbles. So how many marbles do we have all together? Twenty. Okay. Now, how many trials? Or what is a trial? What is a trial, first of all? Okay, and the answer? A trial is, um, well, each, each time we select a marble at random. Okay, so how many trials are we doing? How many times will we select a marble? Four times, so four. All right, are these independent trials? In other words, um, is the probability of getting a red on the second trial going to be affected by whether or not I got a red on the first trial and so on? And so if that, if you say yes, it's going to be affected, the, the probability is going to change based on what happened first, then that means they are not independent, they are dependent. Okay, no, and that's because, you see for because, or I'll just write it out, because we're doing it without replacement. So the probabilities are going to shift from trial to trial. So now that we've thought about that a bit, what's the probability that all four of our marbles are red? So when you're doing multiple trials, and you could read this red and then red and then red and then red. And when you can read it that way, you know you're using the multiplication rule. So what we could do is we could calculate the probability of red on the first try, or let's do it like this. First trial, probability of red on the first trial. And then on the second trial, we have probability of red given that we had red on the first trial already. The third trial, we will calculate the probability of red on the third trial after getting red and red already. And likewise, the probability of red given that we had three reds already without putting them back. So if we calculate each one of these and then multiply them, we'll have our final answer that we're looking for. So let's calculate the probability of red on the first try. That would be five divided by 20 because there are five red out of a total of 20. Okay, now we took one red out, we didn't put it back. So the probability of getting a red on the next try is gonna be that there are now four reds remaining and out of only 19 marbles remaining. So I'll put it like this. I did five out of 20 and four out of 19. And then you might already have the rest figured out. Three out of 18, no bother. 3 out of 18 equals 3 divided by 18, and then 2 out of 17 is 2 divided by 17. And now, multiplying each one of these probabilities together, 
will give me my final answer. So let's put it in here, 0 0.001032. All right. Next, what is the probability that exactly two of the marbles are red? Mm, that is quite a different question, but let's make a new sheet. I'm just going to copy this one and then get rid of this stuff. This, this, no, this, this. <laughs> get rid of that. Okay, so we are doing a different question now. Now the question is what is the probability of exactly to red. All right, so now we have to think about all the ways that you could get exactly to red, right? Um, what are all the ways we could do this? We could have um, the reds could be the first two or the last two. The reds could be um, on the outside. The reds could be on the inside. There could be alternating reds and, and not reds uh, with the R first, the red marble first, or if we've got a not red marble first and they were alternating, that's another way it could happen. So I think I've thought of all the possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ways that I could do this. Okay, so then I can do six times. And then now I'm going to calculate the probability of red, and then red, and then not red, and then not red. And if I multiply that times 6, that'll account for all the different ways that could happen. So the probability of not red on the first try, or sorry, let's, let's focus on this first one that I have typed out here. Red, red, not, not. So the probability that the first try is red is 5 out of 20 then the probability that the second try I get a red after I've already taken one red out is 4 out of 19. And now the last two are going to be not red. So how many are not red? Well, if 5 out of 20 are red, that would leave how many not red? 15, right? So I'm going to have 15 not reds left out of the 18 remaining marbles. And on the next try, I would have only 14 not red marbles left in the bag amongst the 17 total marbles in the bag. So this should be my answer. Let's try it. 0 0.2167 should do the trick. Yay. And we have one more here. What is the probability that none of the marbles are red? Okay, so the probability that none of the marbles are red, let's do it like this. Let's, um, let's do all the numerators together and all the denominators together. So uh, keep in mind, if you're multiplying fractions, as we've been doing, right? So I've been showing it where each fraction was contained in its own set of parentheses. That's fine to do it like that, and it works fine. So if you want to do it that way, do it. But it is a little faster sometimes to just do the numerators all together and then the denominators all together because that's what you do when you multiply fractions. You multiply straight across the numerators and straight across the denominators. And then you reduce the fraction or express it as an approximation, a decimal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the what I consider to be a shortcut here. And remember, we had 15 that were not red. So 15 divided by the 20 on the first try. Oh, I said I was going to do all the numerators first. So it's going to be 15, then 14, then, then 13, then 12. So there's my four trials. And uh, then divide that by starting with 20 times 19 times 18 times 17. Four trials where I'm losing one marble each time. All right, so 0 0.2817, beauty.